Two of America's fastest growing hydrogen companies have just joined forces together to pursue the future of hydrogen fuel cells at a faster rate than has ever been done before. This new agreement comes between Plug Power and Nikola Motors for the purchase of new fuel cell trucks and the purchase of a massive liquefaction plant to produce hydrogen and store hydrogen much more cost effectively. Hydrogen's chicken and egg problem has been the main reason we have not seen mainstream adoption of this technology for consumer ended products. But this agreement is on track to help change that in 2023, which is exactly what I want to analyze in this video. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, let's look at the details of this agreement between Plug and Nikola to understand why this has taken place and how this will benefit both companies, which are obviously at very different stages of their respective business cycles. Basically, this is a non-cash agreement where Nikola plans to sell up to 75 of its hydrogen fuel cell trays to Plug for the next three years and Nikola intends to purchase a 30 metric ton per day liquefaction system from Plug Power. And on top of that, both companies have agreed to executing a 125 metric ton per day green hydrogen supply agreement, meaning Nikola's hydrogen fuel cell trucks can be supplied with clean hydrogen made from solar and wind using Plug's own production facilities. And the big reason why this supply agreement is very important for Nikola is because this allows and gives them access to the hydrogen that Plug produces across all of its six different facilities in America. For those that might not know, Plug Power is one of the oldest companies in the hydrogen fuel cell space. Right now, they own the biggest market share in the hydrogen fuel cell sector for electric forklifts and potentially even green hydrogen over the next five years. They are an expert company when it comes to transporting and storing hydrogen, not only that's made from natural gas, but also now from renewable energy. And because they now have around 500 tons per day of capacity coming online by 2025, they're going to be the sole company that's going to help push costs down in America. Plug reported revenue growth of around 31% in the third quarter and reaffirmed their guidance for hitting a $1.1 billion revenue stream in 2023. And that insane cost reduction and expected revenue growth is all going to be driven by their new hydrogen generation facilities that are coming online in America. These guys already have a plan that's commissioned in Georgia with a ramp up to 30 tons per day by the end of 2023. And not only are their plants like the one in Tennessee already functional, they have all the equipment already in place to liquefy the hydrogen and transport it in tankers to companies and distribution facilities that need the fuel. As a matter of fact, Plug Power was the biggest buyer of hydrogen fuel over the past few years in North America because their fuel cells are in operation in almost every warehouse in the country where electric forklifts leverage their fuel cell technology. And now with the insane capital they raised in 2021 and the strategic acquisitions they made in the electrolyzer business, they're able to enter that very high growth and lucrative market in 2023 and 24. And this ramp up in their sales in that market is exactly what this agreement with Nikola is supposed to help. Because when a company like Nikola is able to get in the door at such an early stage, they're going to be reaping all the cost benefits that come with economies of scale as Plug brings more of these green hydrogen facilities online. And because Plug is the leader in hydrogen liquefiers in America, they're able to control the entire supply chain and potentially bring down the cost of their own produced hydrogen much below the competition. And when you have a company as big as Lint that does $31 billion in revenue annually, also investing in green hydrogen, you know the costs are going to come down exponentially by 2030, which will catalyze the fuel cell production and usage industry. And as I'm sure you already know, the hydrogen industry is following the footsteps of the oil industry very similarly, because at the end of the day, hydrogen is just yet another fuel. Just like oil that you need to dig out of the ground, refine, store, and then supply to tanker trucks to end use points, you need to do the same with hydrogen fuel. It's all about investing in each one of these key steps, which is going to help reduce the cost. 
Right now, we have a lot of production that's coming online, but we don't have enough storage, liquefiers, and tanker trucks to produce and sell that hydrogen. But on the other side, we have good fuel cell trucks that are coming onto the market and customers that are willing to pay the top dollar to get these innovative products on the road. And so all you need now is a bridge between both the production and the consumption sides, which is exactly what this agreement between Plug Power and Nikola Motors is trying to do. Plug Power is an expert in not only compressing hydrogen, but liquefying it and then transporting it using tankers long distances. Because right now they have customers like Amazon and Walmart that are buying thousands of tons of hydrogen every year from them. Amazon, as a matter of fact, has a massive ESG goal for 2030 to reduce their carbon emissions. And the company itself expects to invest in 30,000 forklifts and 800 long haul fuel cell trucks by 2025. Amazon is already one of the biggest buyers of Plug's fuel cell forklifts, but now they're expected to be an even bigger buyer of green hydrogen fuel, which will help bring down costs in the long term because it will obviously support Plug's business. And there is no denying that this is resulting in some massive growth for the green hydrogen sector, with an expected compound annual growth rate of almost 38.2%. To put that number into perspective, the EV market is expected to grow at 16.8% from 2022 to 2027. And as we all know, the EV market is only just getting started as market penetration has only reached around 1-2% to globally. And it's going to be businesses like Nikola Motors and Plug Power that are going to end up benefiting from all that growth because right now they tend to be the only businesses that are investing in the entire value chain from upstream production to downstream use. And to better understand this growth trajectory, I'm going to let the global head of energy at Lazard Asset Management share his understanding of the hydrogen industry today to see where exactly investment opportunities lie. I mean, so Joe, this is quite exciting for us. Last year, I believe we became one of the top buyers of uh, renewable electricity, one of the top 10 buyers of renewable electricity in Texas, right? So uh, when you, you, know, you talk to all the major energy companies, all the pipeline companies, all the utilities, right? What are they saying about what role do they think they should play or they want to play in this whole green hydrogen ecosystem? So I, I just take one step back. I think that yeah. the sophisticated utility executive or energy executive would say, it would say we're going to decarbonize the world, and there are going to be about 10 things that happen. Yeah. It's not one thing, 10 yeah. things, and we're going to need fossil fuels for a while. Yeah. And they accept that hydrogen is one of those 10 things yeah. and is growing in materiality. And, and they're all trying to figure out, um, I think the, the level of understanding of hydrogen is sort of where people were 15 to 17 years ago on renewables when you're in the utility industry. I mean, very sophisticated. Next era, super sophisticated but others, I think, still trying to learn it uh, and understand it and figure out how to uh, deploy that for the benefit of the customer. Okay. But there is zero resistance, zero resistance from the utilities uh, to energy transition stuff. The resistance that you find with the utilities is just around managing costs for ratepayers, which is an in issue in this industry. And then for the, um, for the big oil and gas companies, this is adjacent to what they're good at. Yep. And so, there'll be more and more focus on this area and a desire to participate in this area. And also people need to figure out a way, these pipeline companies, we gotta figure out a way to move hydrogen around. Yep. So they're logical partners for you. Yeah, absolutely. So now do you envision a scenario where there is a new energy giants that evolves, right? In this whole ecosystem of wind, solar, everything that has happened. And uh, how do you see that, right? Where does the utility fit? Where does the traditional energy company fit? Because it's a disruptive technology, if you would, right? A new entrant probably is thinking differently. So how does that ecosystem look like in your mind as a one of the most prominent and a thoughtful banker 10 years out? I, I think you're gonna, you know, companies that we think are leaders and will continue to grow. Um, NextEra is a very, very good company, very strong, um, very good new CEO. They are a energy transition super major. Total is very committed to this. They've got, I mean, they're still in traditional energy, but okay. their migration to in the energy transition will continue to grow. Um, I think that there are one or two other, you know, three other large oil companies who, you know, BP Shell, um, all our, and you see BP just bought Arkea yesterday. Um, 
the day before. And then there's going to, I'm not sure, but some, there's going to be some others who emerge in the area that, that don't exist yet because the total addressable market's so large. So your total addressable market is enormous. It's, it's not inconceivable to see you filling up um, a large portion of that total addressable market. If you capitalize that future prospect and bring it back to today, um, you know, you, the market still isn't recognizing your, your value potential. So I, I don't, the answer is I don't know, but I think some of these big traditional energy companies are going to fill the space because of the complexity of the projects, the, the need to be able to gather capital to take a lot of risk, uh, and construction risk and things like that. Yeah, and as you said, hopefully we're one of those biggest players as well, and that's what we're trying to do, yeah, yeah, right? No, that's the good. work we're trying to accomplish. Well, there you go. One of the world's oldest and most trustworthy asset management firms believe that hydrogen costs right now are facing exactly what solar and wind did 15 to 20 years ago, where nobody believed in the investment early on, and costs were high because the technology was just too complicated. And now that hydrogen demand has 3x since 1975 and oil and gas companies are seeing the benefit of pursuing hydrogen fuel as an alternative, there are cost synergies available in every single aspect of the value chain. And that, in my opinion, is exactly what's going to catalyze the growth of all hydrogen businesses.